Yo, what's going on, guys? It's Houston Sports Talk back into the video today. And today, the Philadelphia Eagles beat the Minnesota Vikings in Philadelphia on the opening Thursday night football game for the start of the season, 34 to 28. As last week, we did have football last Thursday, but that was the NBC season kickoff, which is not really Thursday night football, especially when Prime Videos, you know, mainly Thursday night, where, where you know you see them Thursday night football games. So this was the opening for Thursday night football, and. If any of you, any of you know about the Kirk Cousins primetime curse, I don't know. I mean, you guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section. But from what I saw from Kirk Cousins tonight, I think, I mean, I'm not saying this, you know, this Vikings, uh, I'm not saying that this, you know, Kirk Cousins primetime curse is over. We're going to see it down the road in the season because these Vikings have, like, I think, if not, it's like, it's not, I don't think it's six, but I think they have five primetime games this year. So you're going to get to see Kirk Cousins a little bit more in primetime down the road during this season. But Kirk Cousins did not look too bad today on primetime. Threw no interceptions compared to one he threw last week, and he fumbled twice last week. He only fumbled once today. He threw 31 for 44, 364 passing yards, and four passing touchdowns. For a curse, it's been a problem with primetime. For Kirk Cousins, I, I think, I'm not saying it's over, but he definitely did good tonight. I mean, threw a 62-yard touchdown pass to Jordan Addison, threw four others, two to TJ Hawkinson, um, and then a 10-yard touchdown pass to KJ Osborne. Yeah, I will I will say it was a great day for Kirk Cousins. Jalen Hurts and this Eagles offense, they were okay. They were, they were mostly dominant in the run game. They had three rushing touchdowns in this game. Jalen Hurts threw an interception and only threw 23 passes, not even for 200 pass yards. Second game in a row that Jalen Hurts has not done for 200 passing yards. So the Eagles, they, you know, they, they were a little bit, you know, they, they were able to, you know, control this game, unlike the Patriots game. You know, they weren't able to hold the lead against the Patriots. You know, they'd be up, you know, 16-0, to zero, and then the Patriots would come back and, you know, it'd be a 16-14 ball game. And then, you know, they'd take a 25-14 lead, and then, the, you know, Patriots score a touchdown, and then the Patriots were a touchdown away from taking the lead. They were, like, at the 20-something yard line. So uh, they really, you know, weren't able to control that game. But... I mean, it felt like for a little bit they were controlling this game. They're at twenty-seven to seven at one point. Jalen Hurts threw a sixty-three-yard touchdown pass in the third quarter to Devontae Smith. They were up twenty points. Then Kirk Cousins throws a uh, a couple touchdowns to Jordan Addison and KJ Osborne. The Vikings are right back in it uh, with two touchdowns in the third and fourth quarter. And then they were able to score another touchdown. That's back to a thirteen-point lead for the Eagles. Um, but it, I mean, it felt like the Eagles defensively hasn't been that great in these first two weeks in my opinion they caused four turnovers tonight one was on special teams though but and, and then and then the other turnover actually wasn't really i don't think the eagles really did anything it was justin jefferson's fault on that uh play where it was a touchback I, I think i think you know this eagles defense i mean gave out 28 points to a vikings team and not only did they do that but they also did they did they not only give up 28 points to the Vikings, which they have a decent offense, but, I mean, I just thought, I didn't really like what I saw from the Eagles' defense, to be honest, but their offense was better than they were in week one against the New England Patriots, but they were facing, you know, the Patriots have a way better defense than, than the Vikings do, so I think their offense was definitely down to have a bounce back. Jake Elliott, who had to kick six field goals in week one against the New England Patriots, only had to kick two today. And that was the, you know, we'd see only Jake Elliott kick two field goals, and the Eagles were pretty much able to put in the end zone tonight. They scored a total of four touchdowns compared to only scoring one touchdown in week one against the Patriots. Let's go with the scoring summary. So there was only one score in the first quarter, and that belonged to Jake Elliott with a 24 yard field goal, and it's three to zero. Then the Vikings would take their only lead of the ball game where you'd see Kirk Cousins throw a five-yard touchdown pass to TJ Hawkinson. I will say I did a I did a pregame, and in that pregame, I predicted that Kirk Cousins would throw two touchdown passes, one to TJ Hawkinson, one to KJ Osborne, which I got correct. I didn't think I I didn't think I didn't think you'd see Kirk throw two other touchdowns in this game, especially I didn't think TJ Hawkinson would uh, I especially didn't think TJ Hawkinson would catch two of them tonight. I, I the final score I predicted I believe I predicted the final score to be 28-23 for a victory for the Eagles. Wasn't too far off. I was 5 points off or 6 points off from the Eagles and then I was 
five points off from the Vikings, so I wasn't it wasn't too bad. I predict, I predicted that final score would be twenty eight to twenty three. Final outcome is thirty four to twenty eight. And then the second quarter, after the Hawkinson touchdown, a couple scores for the Eagles before halftime. They scored twice in the final three minutes. A Jalen Hurts one yard touchdown run. It's ten to seven. And then a Jake Elliott. How about this? Sixty one yard field goal for Jake Elliott going into halftime. It's thirteen to seven. And then another one yard touchdown run for Jalen Hurts. This is in the third quarter on the first play. Two-play, seven-yard drive. I think this third quarter started off with a Fletcher Cox forced fumble uh, off of Kirk Cousins, and then the Eagles were able to put in the end zone on a two-play, seven-yard drive, ending with a Jalen Hurts one-yard touchdown run. Extra point is good. It's 20-7. to seven. Then when with two... Three more three more minutes pass, and Jalen Hurts throws a 63-yard touchdown pass to Devontae Smith. But, you know, you know Jalen Hurts... Sorry, Kirk Cousins says. Kirk Cousins says, you, know, "You can throw a sixty-three yard touchdown pass. So can I." Kirk Cousins throws a sixty-two yard, not sixty-three, a sixty-two yard touchdown pass to rookie Jordan Addison with nine minutes and ten seconds remaining in the third quarter. Greg Joseph's extra point is good. It's twenty-seven to fourteen. And then in the start the, to start the fourth quarter, you'd see no more scores in the rest of the third quarter. And then for the first half of the fourth quarter but Kirk Cousins throws a 10-yard touchdown pass to KJ Osborne it's 27-21 with an extra point good by Craig Greg Joseph then first touchdown for DeAndre Swift in the Eagles uniform he was a beast today for the Eagles with 175 rushing yards and one touchdown this is a two-yard touchdown run Jake Elliott's extra point is good it's 34-21 to and then the final touchdown pass for Kirk Cousins is a five-yard touchdown pass to TJ Hawkinson then the game leaders uh, for Minnesota, Kirk Cousins threw 31 for 44, threw into 64 passing yards and four passing touchdowns. The four passing touchdowns for Kirk Cousins was, you know, the most passing touchdowns that any quarterback threw in week one. So um, no no quarterback threw four touchdowns. It was only, th- uh, you saw three three quarterbacks threw three touchdown passes in week one, and that was Jordan Love, Tua Tagovola, and Mac Jones. So Kirk Cousins is the first quarterback to throw four touchdown passes in a game in the 2023 season then Jalen Hurts in this game was 18 for 23 with 193 passing yards one passing touchdown and one interception while Alexander Madison in this Vikings run game struggles another game eight carries 28 rushing yards while the Eagles run game was dominant like always 28 carries 175 rushing yards one rushing touchdown receiving yards I thought uh, Justin Jefferson would not have a good day with you know facing Darius Slay, but Justin Jefferson pretty much owned that Darius Slay matchup. 11 receptions for 160 receiving yards. And I did say in my pregame, uh, in my predict- pregame slash predictions video that Devontae Smith would have a big game for the Eagles and Jalen Hurts would throw the ball mostly to Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard and run the ball a lot with DeAndre Swift. And he would not target AJ Brown a lot. I swear to God, I said that in my predictions video. I posted that uh, like two o'clock something like that go check that out if you don't believe me and there was you know aj brown did get upset at at uh, jalen hurts for not passing the bottom i don't know how many yards aj brown finished with but i don't think it was a good day for aj brown Devonte smith was on fire today for the eagles of four receptions 131 receiving yards and one receiving touchdown uh getting into some other stats uh the 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 vikings only had 28 rushing yards on offense they didn't have any other carries in this ball game uh, besides DeAndre Swift, Jalen Hurts had 12 carries for 35 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. Boston Scott had five carries for 40 rushing yards. And Rashad Penny had a couple of his first carries out there for the Eagles. He did not have any carries in week one against the Patriots. He had three carries for nine rushing yards. Speaking of A.J. Brown, yeah, only had six targets for four, four receptions and 29 receiving yards. While Dallas Goddard, he didn't have a lot of receiving yards, but he was targeted seven times. Six receptions, 22 receiving yards. And DeAndre Swift had six receiving yards, and Penny had five. Uh, Jordan Addison in his second game. Another touchdown for Jordan Addison in the first two weeks. Two touchdowns for Jordan Addison. Three receptions, 72 receiving yards, and one receiving touchdown. TJ Hawkinson, the tight end, what a day. Seven receptions, 66 receiving yards, and two receiving touchdowns. KJ Osborne, three receptions, 34 receiving yards, and one receiving touchdown. Fumbles, there was a sure, sure a lot of fumbles in this game. Uh, they the Vikings lost four fumbles in this game. Kirk Cousins lost a fumble on a uh, Fletcher Cox uh, force fumble. Brandon Powell uh, kick returner lost a fumble on a on a punt return. Alexander Madison lost a fumble running back on a run play, and Justin Jefferson lost a, f- a fumble on a play that Kirk Cousins threw to 
Justin Jefferson. He was about to reach the end zone, tried to reach for the pie line, and I guess he was already there. Um, and when he got there, it was, you know, he was already he was already in for the touchdown, and it was it was one of those touchback rules. The recoveries recovered for these for these Eagles tonight. Uh, the, their fumble recoveries were Fletcher Cox, Justin Evans, Nicholas Moreau. Who just got called up, just got activated to the roster with Nicobe Dean getting injured, and then Kelly Ringo were the fumble recoveries for the Eagles tonight. Their leader in tackles for the Eagles was Zach Cunningham with eight. He also had a tackle for loss, and the Vikings' leader in tackles was Cameron Brenham with 15. Four sacks for these Vikings. If you would have told me that the Vikings would have more sacks than the Eagles, I would have thought you're crazy. Uh, you have three sacks for Daniil Hunter. He was dominant today, and then a half a sack for a Caleb Evans, or sorry, sorry for Ev- 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 Avon Pace Jr. and Harrison Phillips, and three sacks for Daniel Hunter. What a day for Daniel Hunter with three sacks, and then two sacks for the Eagles. Jordan Davis, the Georgia kid, with one sack, and then a sack for Josh Sweat, and three tackles for loss for the Eagles in this ball game. That was pretty much it. Only interception this game. Jalen Hurts threw an interception to linebacker Theo Jackson. And that was it for this ball game. Um, great game. Kirk Cousins had a good game on prime time. Threw for three sixty four. Kirk Cousins has pretty been. Pre- I mean, this Vikings team has not been good to start the season. They've lost two games to start the year. They're zero and two. First time they started zero and two since two thousand twenty one. They weren't zero and two last year. I think they started off two and zero last year. I'm pretty sure they started off two and zero last year. And after starting off two and zero last year, uh, the uh, the Vikings have started off zero and two with a game they should have probably won. Probably should have beat the crap out of the Buccaneers if they didn't make so many mistakes against the Bucks Week One. They sh- they probably and, and they made mistakes tonight. If they didn't make mistakes like they have with turnovers in the last two games, it, turnovers have been the big the big Achilles tear to this Vikings team to start off the year. Turnovers, which stupid turnovers too. The Vikings would be sitting at two and zero. Uh, getting a win they should have won against the Bucks and an upset against the Eagles in Philadelphia. Turnovers have been the Achilles heel to the Minnesota Vikings early on. But Kirk Cousins has not been bad, though, surprisingly. I mean, for prime time, 708 passing yards and six passing touchdowns in the first two games. Not bad for Kirk Cousins. That's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on the game for tonight, and peace out.